Hey guys, TKC here, the Kaijiro channel, and today there's not going to be a Kaijiro news video because, well, frankly, there really wasn't much news to really talk about this week, mainly strategy articles and other awesome stuff like that, so instead, I'm going to take this week to talk about some decks that we're going to be expecting at the next round of KMCs. As you all know, Shadow Alliances just recently came out and a lot of really powerful cards came out of there and a lot of them created new deck archetypes altogether. So, with all that said and done, with these 90 new cards, what decks should we be expecting at this next round of KMCs? So let's start with the most obvious cards from the set, and that would be the two new monarchs in the set, Queen Kalima and Eternal Haven. These two decks alone have pretty much created their own deck archetypes, which is pretty spectacular. They're very... Uh, deck centric. Uh, they can't be splashed too easily in decks, although they could kind of, but it would have a lot of different results. I think Haven is a lot more splashable than Queen Kalima is. Let's start with Eternal Haven. The most obvious thing to use Eternal Haven in is a blocker centric deck uh, using Panopter and other awesome blockers. That will probably be the go-to deck idea for Eternal Haven, so it will probably be Light Water and then either Darkness, Nature, or maybe even both. Then combo that with the new Twilight Archon, which is a level 9 blocker which is playable by Eternal Haven's effect. And then combo the Archon with a lot of cheap Shield Blasts or cheap tap cards like Spark Cage and Sunshock, or even any Shield Blast at all like Crystal Memory. If you trigger that on your opponent's turn, well, they're banishing that tapped creature that just attacked at your shield. So a whole deck can be made just with all those powerful blockers in mind, and that's something to expect. So get your Stormstruck Blast out because you're going to have to be tapping those blockers if you want to get through to shield. Now, I don't expect Haven to be only in Panopter decks. Um, I do expect it in a lot of other decks as well, especially in Light Water Darkness based control decks. Haven is in a way quite better than King Tritonis, although King Tritonis is still a very powerful card. Haven basically does everything in its power to counter Tritonis. I think Light Water Darkness decks will now default to at least two Havens in their deck, maybe even three, just because it's a really big blocker that can't be targeted. In a way, it's just as good as playing Andromeda of the Citadel. Sure, Andromeda of the Citadel gives you two shields and an extra defense, but you bring out this big Eternal Haven that you can't get rid of easily 15,500 power, it can double break, and you could even draw a card every time you attack with it. Even if you don't have any blockers to play, well, you're going to be still drawing cards every time you play it and attack with it. And if you thought Bottle of Wishes into Andromeda was pretty bad, well, I guess you're mistaken because now there's Eternal Haven that can be played off of Bottle of Wishes, and tears will be flowing forever out of your eyes once that happens because I think that's a lot worse than Andromeda off of a bottle. At least with Andromeda you could bring it back to the hand with cards like Rusalka or Finbar to get through and just finish the game off but with Haven you just can't do anything about it unless you have Storm Spark or some sort of way to get rid of it without targeting it like your own Kalima which uh, doesn't target, by the way, makes them choose. Or even cards like Crimson Wyvern are getting more popular just because of this Haven card, so who knows what's going to be happening there. Now, of course, as you all know already, James Hada and his awesome Kalima deck, uh, that is also something I do expect at KMCs, but maybe with a little bit more of a different approach. Um, I know Jerry Thompson posted an article with his spin on the deck, which was kind of interesting. It was a lot more focused on darkness, and it used three Mark of Kalimas as well in addition to it. So that could be very interesting as well, maximizing your odds of hitting many darkness cards off of the effect. And at the same time, you're having more removal cards because of using the marks. There's also some other variants that use cards like Bottle of Wishes to get up Kalima, or other cards like I don't know, Gregorius Fortress, uh, Boron Reality Shaper, Kuragar, Cordia. There's a lot of weird combinations you can do with that Kalima deck as a whole, so um, I'm expecting a lot of really cool things to come out of that. Okay, now moving on the total opposite side of the Monarchs, we're going to be talking about the cheap cards now. These are the cards that will fit easily into Rush decks. Um, so let's start with Blitzer Mech Falcora. That card is really awesome. Uh, Light Fire is something I really do expect as a way better Rush deck. I think Mono Fire Dracons is kind of kind of disappear from the meta for now because it really didn't get much of a boost with this set. It got Blaze Tail Heliflame, which absolutely has no right to be in that deck. I don't think it would really work in a Monofire Dracon deck. But now with new cards in Blitzer Mech Falcora, Blinder Beetle Prime, even like Metal Max, 
Uh, light fire has a huge increase in potential now. I think mono light will still be a thing. I think, you know, people use three blinder beetle primes, a couple roadie gales maybe still, and the sparkly protectors will stay there as well. But I do feel that with the addition of these new light fire cards, I think it's going to be kind of spun on its head and light fire will probably be the go-to rush deck. I could be very well wrong here, but light fire is very, very powerful for rush right now. Then there's also fire water rush, which I'm also expecting quite a lot of. Cards like flame spitter fits really well in there. Scalding surge is a really nice removal spell because you can either get rid of a blocker or if you can't get rid of that blocker because of its power, well, you can at least bounce it back to their hand. Uh, you can use the Neuron combination with Cyber Scamp because Cyber Scamp is just a ridiculous card. It's perfect bait for Neuron and it's really annoying for control decks because they play spells all the time. So that's just, I don't know, like four different Rush decks that see a chance of making it in the KMCs. So I'm expecting some really cool things there too. Now let's go in the middle of those two decks. Let's go with the aggressive tempo-like decks. Uh, let's start with the most obvious one and that one will be Blurple because once Again, I just talked about Cyber Scamp and Emperor Neuron. I think just the Cyber Scamp alone gives the deck a huge boost. Even Doom Blast Scare Adorable can fit into this kind of deck, but I'm not too sure. It's kind of top heavy, it's level 7. It's kind of hard to play in that kind of deck. You kind of want to go fast. But uh, Doom Blast Scare Adorable is a nice alternative to Dark Scare Adorable, or you could even use both. Uh, put Ball of Wishes so you can get it out early, things like that. Um, some Blurple ideas will easily come into fruition thanks to these new cards. I think Megabugs will also stick around. Um, Megabugs is perfectly fine the way it is, but you could add in cards like, oh look, Cyber Scamp once again. Cyber Scamp fits into almost anything that's water these days except for control decks themselves, I guess. You could even use Squall Darter. It's a new Megabug that is unblockable. That could be very interesting as well. I don't know if that will see any play, but it's something to look into. Now, Saber Bolt. Um, I think that name is going to be officially re name to Saber Raka, and that's because Heretic Prince Varaka is absolutely insane and Bloltail looks n like nothing compared to this card. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use both, I mean you can use three Bloltails and three Varakas if you're absolutely insane, uh, I think that could work. Uh, Aqua Saber Bolt is definitely something to look into, then you can use Varaka as an alternative to Bloltail or as like a side-by-side -side companion to Bloltail gives all your things fast attack, which is pretty awesome. You can give your Pricklebacks fast attack, that's pretty cool. I think Varaka has a very nice place there in the Sabretooth deck. And speaking of Varaka, let's talk about the Dragon decks, because I think that's going to be very popular as well. Varaka will easily go into those Greed Dragon decks, no problem. It's just a big dragon that has fast attack. You can play it off of Herald of Infernus if you'd like. I think even Dragon Knight Valeron could see play into these kind of decks. It's kind of like an aggressive Andromeda in a way, and it's also a dragon that can be played off of Herald of Infernus or be cheaper with the birds. I think even the set premiere promo Bakar Frostwing could even make it into these kind of decks if you use water and nature in the Greed Dragon deck. If you make like a more uh, nature-oriented Greed Dragon deck instead of darkness, uh, you can easily fit Bakar in there, and you can even put Fight to combo with Bakar. Uh, even combo with Herald, you can do lots of weird stuff with that. I mean, Bakar is pretty crazy. It's unblockable. You win a battle, you draw two cards. Uh, I mean, it's not very terrible, especially since it's a double breaker that's practically unblockable except for Haven, which is a huge problem. But yeah, hopefully that sums up everything. That is just a bunch of decks that I do expect to see in the next round of KMCs. Now, the first tournament that's going to be starting is actually not going to be the first week of KMCs, but this weekend, there's going to be an ARG Open Series in Fort Worth, Texas. So expect some awesome stuff from there. I believe Bobby Brake is going to be competing there. A lot of awesome names are going to be there. Basically, all of Texas is going to be there, first of all. And apparently, there's also going to be coverage of the event as well. So I'm expecting deck lists, or deck profiles, uh, maybe even feature matches. That would be pretty cool as well. But I guess we'll have to see what Alter Reality Games decides to do. But that will be our first glance at what the tournaments are going to be looking like once the KMC start. And hopefully this little summary has given you an idea of what to expect at the KMCs coming up, uh, maybe which decks you actually want to try out. I just thrown out a bunch of ideas there, so hopefully you could, you know, pick one, give it a shot, practice with it, and get ready for the KMCs coming out soon. Um, I know I kind of went through the decks really quickly, and I know a lot of newer players might not know exactly what I'm talking about, so if you have any questions about any of the decks, please feel free to message me or put in the comments. I'll be glad to reply and give you a pretty good answer. 
and talk about the deck a bit more in detail with you if you'd like. Now before I go, I'm going to ask you guys a viewer question of the day. So, which card do you think is going to be the most popular card from Shired Alliances at the KMCs? Will it be Eternal Haven? Will it be Queen Kalima? Or will it even be Necros? I know that's not in Shattered Alliances per se, but it came out alongside it, kind of. Um, or even Bladefish. I don't know if you're that crazy. Maybe you think Bladefish will make its way into some awesome decks. Uh, just go ahead and post in the comments what you think is going to be the most popular card. So with all that said and done, this is TKC, the Kaijuo channel, signing off. I'll see you at the KMCs this season.